Okay. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Walter Jan. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, please feel free to stop me if you have any questions, or we can uh, answer questions at the end, whatever uh, you would like. Uh, first, I'd like to give uh, you know a couple of shout outs. Uh, first off, to Orange County Community College. And for those of you who are my students, uh, once again, if you wanted to send me a brief uh, synopsis of this talk, uh, you know, just uh, to my email, that would be great. Uh, then uh, to members of the Orange County Audubon Society or OCAS, uh, I'll be showing you uh, a number of videos. Uh, one of uh, the items uh, of a bald eagle making uh, a nest or carrying nest ma uh, material, uh, just uh, it was I think three weeks ago, I was in Audubon Sanctuary and a bald eagle flew over uh, with some nesting material, apparently on its way to make a new nest. I'm not quite sure where, so that was exciting. Uh, and then also from uh, in Sullivan County, uh, the Bashikal Area Association. Uh, not only have they done an incredible job over 20 years uh, with what was once called Eagle Watch and is now called Nature Watch, uh, where people can stop by and go hiking, uh, but there will be volunteers on weekends with a spotting scope to invite people to take a look at a bald eagle's nest through the spotting scope for many people for the first time. That's such a wonderful opportunity. Not only will that be happening again uh, this year, uh, but on April 6th will be the training for people who might like to be volunteers uh, for that program. I'm one of the, uh, the two co-directors of that, so feel free to send me your information and um, if that was something of, of interest to you. So certainly there's a lot of great organizations in the area which support uh, bold uh, eagles, which is the topic of the talk uh, tonight. I'd like to just kind of frame it like big and then get specifically to the uh, bold eagle. Uh, so the question I'd like to um, ask at the beginning is, did this happen? All right, so did this bold eagle and did this, um, a uh, dinosaur ever meet each other? And as you can see, the the dinosaurs very correctly answering in the negative, no. So uh, eagles are new to planet Earth, all right? So they have not been here that long. No dinosaur ever saw a bald eagle or any eagle for that matter. And so if we were to look at uh, geologic time, uh, vertebrates have been around since the beginning of this blue period uh, for more than 500 million uh, years. Um, uh, birds did not appear until the middle of the green period, but then uh, the group that eagles belong to didn't appear until the red and bald eagles much more recently. And so uh, here the first birds appear in the Jurassic period and the first birds, well, they looked an awful lot like dinosaurs. Well, because they had descended from dinosaurs, they had teeth and they had long clawed fingers and um, uh, uh, long reptilian tails, and they weren't very good at flying at all. And so a fascinating story that I tell uh, in other scenarios is just how very gradually all of the features that we associate with birds um, developed very slowly over time. So the birds that first appeared, you know, uh, in the age of dinosaurs, they were not the modern birds. And all of the things that make birds really good at being birds today, uh, all of these things come in different colors because in a family tree, each color represents a different point of the family tree. You know, some came early, some came later, uh, but birds were built very uh, gradually. Right around the time that the dinosaurs became extinct, um, that is when uh, it seems the group that has given us the birds alive today started to branch. Now, we can't be absolutely positive of this, but it seems that the birds alive today had produced one branch, which would kind of be like the ostriches and the rheas, and it would be their ancestors. Another branch, which would be uh, the chickens, um, and uh, the ducks, and then a third branch, which would lead to everybody else uh, by the time the dinosaurs become extinct. But then 60% of life dies out in the uh, end um, uh, uh, Cretaceous uh, extinction. And then that's 
in the aftermath of that, that we get all of the birds we see today. So when we look at birds, we put them in big groups called orders. And if we say, all right, well, the order that um, the bald eagle uh, belongs to, it would have been one of the ones to appear shortly after the dinosaurs went extinct when this green uh, period uh, began. But if you were to ask, when did the family that the bald eagles belong to, uh, that would occur a little bit later in the Eocene. So even after the dinosaurs died, you know, a good 15 million years passes before there are any members of this uh, group at all. All right. And then we have the eagles. Now, here's a problem. I like to use good biological words. And so here's a question. Here's a bald eagle and here's a bunch of other eagles like the harpy and, you know, the, the crested eagle, etc. Are they closely related? Interestingly, the answer, no, they're not. And so it turns out, as much as I like the word eagle, it's not really a good biological word. So there's a golden eagle, all right? Um, turns out, eagle is just a fancy way of saying a really big hawk. And from the ancestors of hawks and eagles, there were at least three lineages that got bigger. And so not all eagles are closely related to each other. So what we call the sea eagles, and that would include the bald eagle, they're not related to these guys. So some hawks got bigger and became these guys, and then some hawks got bigger and became these guys. And when I say hawks, that might include kites as well. So um, the word eagle doesn't imply that they're all related to each other. Some eagles are more closely related to certain hawks than they are to other eagles. The bald eagle is one of the sea eagles or fish eagles. And the easiest way to tell, you know, it's almost perfect. So let, let's go. We'll, we'll, we'll take almost perfect is to look at whether there are feathers going all the way down their legs. So all of these eagles that are not closely related to um, the bald eagles, and this would be like relatives of the golden eagle, they have feathers that go down to their feet. They are called the booted eagles, whereas bald eagles don't have that. And you wouldn't want that if you're going to keep dipping your hands into uh, the water to catch fish because your feathers would get wet and in cold water they would freeze. You know, so you don't want that. And so... Uh, the booted eagles, uh, one of the easy ways to, uh, to see that they are different is to look at their, uh, their feathers, um, but there are plenty of other things as well. So if you were to look at a golden eagle, for example, it looks a whole lot different from a bald eagle. Um, the bill is not as thick. There's a bunch of other differences. So the bald eagle is a sea eagle, and there are a bunch of these throughout the world. Um, they are a sub family of uh, the family of raptors, which includes hawks and eagles. They've been known in the fossil record for about 16 million years. So that's the middle of the age of mammals. Prior to that, there were no sea eagles. Um, and they do share some features. Uh, they mostly feed on fish, but they can feed on other things, including carrion. That actually comes up later when we talk about uh, a bunch of things, including what uh, eagles do in the winter and some of the risks they face. Um, e bald eagles are not vultures in that they are feeding on carrion primarily. Um, but they do feed on carrion a lot, much more so than most other raptors. So when you look at raptors, we have vultures that do a whole lot of feeding on carrion. Um, uh, eagles are beneath that, but they would feed on carrion more than the, um, as say, the hawks uh, would. All right. Uh, all of these uh, sea eagles are brown as juveniles, but have some white color as uh, adults. Uh, and sometimes they can even be hard to distinguish, especially when juvenile. So the bald eagle of North America looks an awful lot like uh, the white-tailed eagle of Europe and Asia. And as juveniles, it's hard to tell them uh, apart. Okay. So this is a new bird. All right, so that most of the uh, history of life on Earth has never seen an eagle. The sea eagles are new and uh, from uh, ancestors which would give rise to the sea eagles and then, you know, uh, the white-tailed eagle and the bald eagle, we get um, the one we see today. Now, just uh, we can talk about anatomy at the end. If you were a beginner 
uh, bird watcher, wanting to see eagles in our area. Once again, this is such an exciting thing to see uh, uh, eagles. Uh, there are a lot of birds of prey, birds with sharp beaks and sharp talons, which are you know going to feed on other animals primarily. And so at some point, one of the things you want to do is, all right, what am I looking at? Am I looking at a bald uh, eagle? All right. And so, you know, we look at a number of things, the size and the shape, how they act, uh, et cetera. All right. And so raptors in general, OK, they tend to be large birds having curved pointed beaks and sharp talons. And unlike other birds which are hiding you know, from predators, these uh, raptors, they're looking for prey like mice, et cetera. So they, they're often perched in the top of a tree where uh, they uh, have a good visibility. So if you see a bird just sitting there rather than flitting around and hiding, you know, that's a good uh, clue that it is uh, a raptor. Um, some have larger heads and uh, primarily come out at night, the owls, so, you know, it's easy to kind of uh, uh, exclude uh, them. Hawks, eagles, and falcons have a smaller head compared to uh, the rest of, uh, of their body. Okay. Now, vultures are often seen near roadkill, although you can see bald eagles there as well. Ospreys and bald eagles are primarily feeding on fish, so you'll find them closer to bodies of uh, water. All right, so here we see a vulture on a roadkill, but once again, an eagle might be near uh, them. Uh, there are two vultures in our area, and when they fly, their wings are more likely to be held in a V pattern, uh, which uh, compares to the uh, eagles, which will tend to hold their wings more uh, straight. Right. Uh, there is a fishing uh, eagle, an osprey, uh, that is not actually a true eagle, but it's sometimes called a fishing eagle. And it's easy to confuse it with um, bald eagles, especially immature ones, because immature uh, bald eagles, this will be the last part of the head to turn white. So brown. So you'll see an immature, maybe three and a half years old, having some white on their head, but maybe brown uh, here. And so if you're looking at a bird with some white, some brown, uh, it could be an osprey. It could be a, an immature uh, bald uh, eagle. All right. Now, ospreys will have a white chest. All right, that a bald eagle wouldn't. It might have white on the chest, but it wouldn't have a pure white chest like that. Um, that brown eye stripe is much more uh, obvious and darker on an osprey. And if you look at this osprey, what is, sorry. Well, I don't know how we got there. Yeah. I'm sorry, we went from my website to somewhere else. So I'm not quite sure. Um, uh, and if you look here in flight, can you see the ospreys tend to have a crook in uh, their uh, wings where the wrist is? Uh, that is an easy way to distinguish an osprey when uh, they are flying uh, over. So uh, eagles will tend to hold their wings out uh, straight uh, as opposed to vultures, which will tend more to be in a V. And ospreys tend to have a little crook in uh, the elbow just there. And I point this out because a lot of times this is all you get to see. You know, I, I'm sure bird watchers, you know, you know this. It would be wonderful if the bird would just sit and pose for the camera and show you all of its angles. And so you could look for distinguishing uh, features. But sometimes that's not what you get. And especially if the light isn't good, you might just get a dark outline of a bird. So if you wanted to identify an eagle, the wings are incredibly long. Uh, so that's um, uh, something that uh, can help you. Uh, they're held, once again, out uh, typically straight as opposed to in a V. Uh, they have a fan-shaped uh, tail. And so uh, uh, things like that can help you uh, distinguish between uh, these. Now, uh, bald eagles are absolutely wonderful birds, uh, but obviously one of the reasons we are so interested in them is uh, because of the importance uh, that they have for our country. They are the second largest raptor in North America. This is the first one. So this is the California, California condor. It is actually much, much bigger than a bald eagle. It is the only uh, bird in North America, uh, which is. All right, so uh, the condors, they have a much longer wingspan. They have a much, um, they are much heavier. Uh, the bald eagle is second. Gold eagles are third. 
All right, so uh, they're close to a bald eagle in size, but maybe on average a pound lighter and their wingspan a foot uh, shorter uh, uh, here. So uh, bald eagles are exciting, being the uh, second uh, largest birds uh, in uh, North uh, America. Now, obviously, one of the reasons we, we care about them so much is uh, because, you know, them being the symbol of our uh, country. I was going to focus on the biology of the bald eagles, just men mention a thing or two and maybe get back uh, to maybe the history of it. Um, it took Congress six years to decide on bald eagles uh, being part of the great seal of the United States, where like you have a bald eagle and holding a shield and there's arrows. Um, that was not the original design. Originally, there was a, a little committee that formed with uh, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and John Adams to pick a seal. And they thought they this was urgent because they thought, you know, that the congressional delegation isn't going to vote on the Declaration of, of, of Independence until we get a seal. So we have to really hurry and do that. But then the Declaration of, of uh, Independence was approved. It turned out they weren't waiting on the seal. And uh, Benjamin Franklin, uh, who maybe wasn't the biggest fan of bald eagles, I'll get to that again in, uh, later, uh, but maybe he was not 100% serious. In any case, he proposed uh, a seal that involved, uh, you know, the biblical reference to Moses, because he wanted to, you know, kind of say that the United States against King George was kind of like Moses against Pharaoh. So that was Franklin's idea, and that didn't quite work out. Um, uh, Thomas Jefferson also had kind of a biblical idea uh, where, you know, the, the Jews uh, leaving uh, the desert uh, with a pillar of fire on one side of a medallion and on the other uh, side of a medallion, two um, Germanic brothers uh, who would initiate the drive to overthrow Rome. Uh, so, and so neither of those were chosen. Uh, and then there was a second committee that formed, and then uh, that that design was problematic and not chosen. So it took six years before the bald eagle became uh, officially um, part of the great uh, seal of uh, the United States. Um, when we talk about size, I'd love to say this is how big bald eagles are. Unfortunately, as you might imagine, here's a bird that um, its original habit habitat was almost all of Canada, uh, almost all of the uh, United States uh, into um, uh, northern uh, Mexico. Every now and then one will end up on the Virgin Islands and very rarely one ends up in Ireland. Um, uh, but it's a North American bird, but North America is a big continent. And so as you might guess, not every bald eagle is the same size. So, and there are two big uh, reasons for this in addition to in the individual variation. In raptors in general, females are larger than males, all right? So a female bald eagle can weigh say 10 to 14 pounds as opposed to the males eight to 10 pounds. When we get to nesting later, that becomes an issue. The male often does not have permission to feed at the nest, all right? If the male brings a fish, to the nest, uh, the female very quickly makes it, you know, uh, him aware that he is not welcome. And so he will do most of his feeding a uh, little ways. He's much smaller than the female. And as the eaglets start to grow up, very often the male is smaller than them. All right. And so by the end, it, you know, the, the male bald eagle bringing fish to the nest is surrounded by birds that are bigger wow. than uh, he is. That, and, you know, and that, that can be, uh, a bit of a, a problem. I've even heard that if the male shows up without food, some of the young actually like grab onto one of his toes instead, and they're bigger than him by this point. So, so that's a problem. Um, uh, not just overall size, but the females are a little different. Their their bill is thicker. Their talons are proportionally larger. So there's a couple things here. Um, and then a second uh, source of variation is. Uh, where they live. So if you go to Alaska, you would see giant eagles. If you go to Florida, you'd see very small ones. And that's not uncommon. A lot of animals, like think of bears, all right? Uh, the farther south you get, the bears are a little smaller. The farther north you get, the bears are a little bit bigger. We see that a lot. And so um, as far as bald eagle size, uh, you know, we'd love to say bald eagles are this size. But like I said, uh, not only do individuals vary, but there's a gender variation and there is um, 
uh, a variation uh, geographically. Uh, the largest of them, uh, their wingspans uh, can be seven and a half feet, almost eight feet. All right, which once again is uh, obviously enormous. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, in Alaska, uh, there have been uh, eagles which had an eight foot wingspan and weighed 15 pounds, uh, which is uh, once again, the largest uh, of the, the, known, uh, the known eagles. Um, so bald eagles mostly eat fish, but once again, it's one thing to, to give what something which is generally true. Ah, these are generally fishing eagles, as are all their relatives. They're in the sea eagle subfamily. And they're going to eat a lot of fish. So that's a good thing to know. But there's lots of exceptions to that. And, and, and so let's just kind of, you know, if that's where your knowledge ends, like you'll make mistakes every now and then. So first, they eat fish. But what fish this is can, can vary. So what fish do you find in Canada? Well, it might be like these species, the Cisco, suckers, pike, walleye. What species would you find if you're off Massachusetts uh, or Nova Scotia? Well, now cod is what you would find. But you're going to find a lot of catfish in central Florida. So, A, they can eat fish, but which fish they're eating might depend on where in North America uh, they are. But this can vary because lakes freeze in winter. All right. Or and this is a big thing in our area that's about to happen is. Um, when you get to mid-spring, that's when a couple of fish species are going to migrate up the Delaware and Hudson Rivers from the ocean. So if you're kayaking on the Delaware in about two months, you'll see this. You'll just see all of these fish known as shad. They've lived much of their life in the oceans, but they're coming upstream, stream, uh, swimming up the current, going from the ocean, swimming up, you know, you know, through Maryland, up the Delaware, you know, all the way up to our area where they're going to lay their eggs. Now, some may make it and live to do this another year, but a lot are going to die because that's a hard journey to do. And so as you just have huge numbers of fish swimming up our rivers and dying, this is just when the eagles are feeding their young. So um, when they eat fish, there are certain times of year where, you know, it's the shad in the migration uh, and the Hudson River would have uh, something uh, similar. So eating fish and different kinds of fish. That being said, if you've got, you know, a seven foot wingspan, all right, you can eat a lot of things. You can pretty much eat what you want. All right. And so therefore, uh, I've seen eagles going after ducks and it seems you know, and the first time I saw it, it seemed so crazy because I thought, like, aren't you a fishing eagle? And most of the time, yes, but they are opportunistic feeders. They do eat a lot of ducks, mallards primarily, but there are some areas where coots made a, a, make a, a large part of their diet. Um, they'll go after uh, nestlings in great blue heron nests. They'll go after great blue heron eggs, even an occasional adult. They can eat mammals such as rabbits, muskrats, squirrels, raccoons, and others. Now, this is not common, uh, what I'm about to say, but, you know, and if you will go on YouTube, you can find this. There are um, a case of bald eagles going after house cats and small dogs. There was one incident where there was like, I think it was like kindergarten or first grade grade class that would start each day off by looking at the eagle cam. And then there was one day where the bald eagle brought a house cat uh, while I think it was still alive to its eaglets. And, you know, they devoured it. And this was traumatic for a lot of the kids. So just um, uh, they don't only eat um uh, fish. Uh, they can uh, feed on things which aren't birds or mammals, like snakes, turtles, frogs, uh, crabs, and carrion. As I pointed out, they'll go after dead stuff. So I almost hit a bald eagle once. I was driving down a road and it was by a dead deer. And because it has such big wings, taking off is something that it struggles with. Very good at soaring, not so good at taking off. And so, you know, I was slowing down as quick as I could, but all of a sudden this huge bird is trying to fly from the side of the road in front of my car. Um, uh, don't be surprised if you uh, see that from time to time. Just a quick thing, when we talk about the risks eagles face, humans have changed so much about North America. One is the whole Midwest used to be covered in bison. And eagles, I think, we, we, we surmise, were very 
um, they used uh, the bison uh, carrion as an important part of their diet, especially in winter. In winter, a lot of water bodies freeze and fish aren't as available. Uh, and so uh, they can feed on different things at different times of the year. And uh, immatures aren't as good at being catching uh uh, living fish as the adults are. They get better at their fishing skills over time. And so immatures are more likely to feed on uh, on carrion. And so there are a lot of things in a bald eagle's diet. The carrion will come up again because one of the things that threatens bald eagles is there are some ranchers, say, who want to kill coyotes. So they poison like a dead deer. They'll shoot a deer. They'll poison it with the idea that coyotes or foxes or whatever they're trying to kill will come and um, and eat it and they'll deter the predator. Uh, but then a bald eagle uh, will come and ingest the poison as well. So um, those are huge wings, just huge. And uh, while they can fly by flapping continuously, the way that uh, you know, uh, you know, most birds uh, would that you can think of, um, that would take an, an incredible amount of energy. So what they like to do is to use uh, rising currents of warm air, thermals, and then use this to soar. All right, and so um, that's what they're really good at. Uh, those large wings are good for soaring. But now if you're trying to take off and land, it's hard. So when bald eagles are leaving their nest, uh, taking off and landing for the first time for eagles who have never flown before, it's hard. And some will fall for the nest and the, the adults have to feed them for a while on the ground because uh, yes. just... You know, if you have a question, I'd be happy to answer. But if not, I'm, I'm going to mute you just in case. Um, uh, it's, it's really hard uh, to, uh, uh, to manage the takeoffs and the landings. Apparently what older birds will tend to do is if they want to land on an area, they fly into the wind. So the wind is kind of resisting them and helping them slow down. Immatures don't know that yet. And so immatures often don't land nicely and overshoot, uh, these. Because they want those rising air currents, they like a little agitation in the air. If the air is perfectly calm, that makes it harder for eagles to fly. They're, they're, there's nothing uh, to soar on. And so if you see a really calm, windless day, you might be more likely to see uh, eagles perching uh, than flying, once again, because they're going to de depend on those, um, uh, those rising uh, thermals. So here's just some pictures of... Uh, of eagles here. Now I will talk about immature. So some of these you might think that's not a bald eagle because it doesn't have a white uh, head or tail. As I'll point out uh, in just a few uh, minutes, uh, that doesn't develop until they're four and a half to five uh, years uh, old. So that is uh, a bald uh, eagle. Uh, there. And so this is just a wonderful time of year. Uh, we can see them coming back from uh, uh, their migration routes if they've spent time um, uh, uh, south of us. Uh, and uh, during migration, what they'll tend to do is use the warm air to rise up high and then just glide down over a course of several miles and then do that again. Red-tailed hawks uh, don't need as strong a thermal to go up, but they don't, they can't go uh, such a great uh, distance uh, uh, here. Now, some of the birds who are coming back to our area, uh, they may have been here last year or the year before, and they return to the same uh, area to breed uh, each year. So, that, you know, they may be returning home or they may be coming from where they had hatched. Some of the eagles in our area may be never left and have been here all winter. All right. And so migration is a tricky uh, thing with uh, bald eagles. There is a lot of variation. So uh, sometimes they mi uh, some uh, they migrate, some uh, don't. Um, and this could vary on how warm the winter is as well, if the water doesn't freeze. When they start to migrate, adults know where they're going, but the immatures don't. And so wind direction will actually uh, uh, end up uh, having an influence over uh, where uh, they go. Now, this next map, I think, is really interesting because with a lot of birds, you can say the birds go from here to there. This is where they uh, they migrate. But with bald eagle, like I said, there's variation. So if you are uh, if you hatch in a nest in Canada, Saskatchewan was where my source was talking about, where do the bald eagles go to um, 
uh, at uh, the end of summer, well, here these red lines indicate a big area, all right? But mostly they're going south. But if you were banded in the state of New York, where would you go? Many go south, some go west, some go north. If you were banded in the Chesapeake Bay, it's almost random which way you go. And so it's hard to talk about the migration of bald eagles because uh, there's lots of, um, of variation. Okay. So the bald eagles, they come back to our area. Now, they um, might meet a pair here. So if they're returning to a place they've been before, since bald eagles tend to mate uh, for life, uh, maybe their pair is already here. Maybe they never left. And, and so they spend all winter in our area. If you know this area, um, and I've been trying to you know, watch bald eagles for 20 some years in our area, no matter how cold it gets, there are still a few places where you can find open water and thus um, uh, bald eagles. So this is close to the Rio Dam near Forestburg and along the Delaware uh, River where the Lackawaxen comes in at the Roebling Bridge. Those areas are great spots to see eagles uh, in winter because the water uh, never freezes. Uh, and so you, uh, you often see lots of uh, uh, bald eagles there. Now, uh, bald eagles, uh, most will mate for life. And they can live 30 years. So this could be a very long uh, partnership. If one partner dies, uh, they may separate after, uh, so they, they can find a new one. Or if uh, one season they don't have a successful nesting, they might, um, they might separate. In birds, even if they mate for life, that doesn't mean they don't mate with other partners as well. And very often uh, one can find in a nest uh, that uh, uh, chicks may have multiple fathers. That does happen with bald eagles, but not very often. And many other birds, it's far more common. And interestingly, there are couples where there are three birds. All right. And then so even though, you know, most partners are, you know, a male and a female, uh, you can have three birds forming a stable uh, relationship. Uh, their uh, courtship uh, includes a lot of very impressive um, uh, behaviors, including a cartwheel display while uh, both uh, partners will fly up very high, grasp talons, and then fall to the ground, breaking away just before they reach a ground. Uh, so that's really, really impressive. Um, there was once uh, that I know of uh, where uh, two dead eagles were found on the ground with their talons still uh, uh, grass. So as one might guess, you would have to time that very, very well. Uh, uh, with uh, two eagle partners, they can sit on perches together, they can vocalize together, they can stroke each other's bills, head, neck, shoulder, and breast with their uh, bills. That may be one of the reasons that bald eagle bills are much thicker than normal, because uh, the bills do have an important role in uh, courtship. Um, Around this time of year, uh, they repaired a nest together. So maybe they built uh, a, a new nest, but since the nest will get re, uh, uh, tend to be reused, as I'll show you in the next video, uh, what uh, they do is they'll bring new st uh, sticks to it. They'll bring uh, moss and grass to line uh, the nest. Uh, both eagles may provide some feathers for the nest. And so uh, one of the things that keeps the uh, the pair together is once again, this, uh, 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 this building of uh, a nest together uh, or uh, repairing. So here you see a, an eagle in our area uh, as it's still snowing. Uh, you know, they can spend the winter here, but but they want to get back uh, by uh, March uh, because this is when they start laying eggs in their nests. When you look at a bald eagle nest, this is the largest nest that birds make in the world. No other bird makes a bigger nest uh, than this. Um, now, their nests have to be away from human uh, 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 areas because they're bothered by humans. And so there are some birds which, you know, like ospreys can nest where humans are in boats, et cetera. Um, but if there's a lot of humans going by, you know, this will scare them away. And then that's less time on the eggs. The eggs may freeze, et cetera. And so they tend to pick a remote area. They prefer tall, robust trees all right, but they can make do on cacti if they must. They can make do on um, uh, uh, treeless islands if they must. So while they prefer trees, it's not an absolute uh, case. So just 
if anyone's interested, uh, this is um, uh, some clips from about a month ago along the Bashakil at an eagle's nest, which one can clearly see at um, uh, the boat launch, which is across from the winery. So if you were to go uh, to uh, the main you know, parking area on the Bashakil across from the winery, um, you could see this. And, and once again, on weekends, there'll be a volunteer uh, with a spotting scope uh, you know, to uh, help you focus on the eagles, et cetera. So if you've never seen a bald eagle nest and would like that wonderful experience, you could. So uh, this was about a month ago. The eggs probably weren't laid uh, yet. Here's an eagle. They were probably repairing uh, uh, the nest. And in a few minutes, uh, somewhere in here, I, I took this was some of this uh, from a couple weeks ago. That's, oh, yeah. So uh, so once again, a couple of weeks ago here, you see a bald eagle carrying uh, vegetation, which they're going to line the nest with. So they every year they add more sticks to the outside, but vegetation to the inside. So this is at the Bashakil, but I also saw bald eagles doing this near Goshen uh, and took some pictures of them carrying uh, vegetation uh, here. Now, if they add to this every year, the problem is it just gets heavier and heavier, all right? And that can actually be a problem because this can now uh, break the branch that it is uh, sitting on and then can break the entire uh, tree. So they really want to pick robust trees. It doesn't have to be the tallest, all right, but they certainly want it to be thick and strong. We humans have made that more difficult because there aren't as many thick, strong trees around as there used to be. All right, we you know we do a lot of deforestation, and a lot of these uh, you know the the best nest uh, trees have been uh, cut uh, down. There are some record ones where one eagle's nest was used over 60 years and reached the skies of 18 square feet. Another ne uh, nest weighed two tons and measured 10 feet high and eight feet across. So once again, sometimes these break the uh, branches uh, that. Um, uh, they are uh, they are made in. So once again, bald eagles uh, make the largest nests in uh, the bird uh, in the bird uh, kingdom and uh, uh, the bird class. And then I give you um, some data on that lining of the nest. Right around uh, now, if it hasn't already happened, bald eagles are laying eggs. Uh, so they it's going to take a while for the young to develop, and um, they certainly want to do this so they can feed them enough fish. And up north, there's a really narrow window because you don't want to lay your eggs too soon because it's cold and the water might still be frozen. You might have trouble getting enough uh, uh, fish, um, but you don't want to be too late either or else it starts to get cold before the young are ready to fly. All right. So uh, timing is important. Most eagles' nests have two eggs in them, all right? But some have one, some have three. Those are common enough. And in really good uh, uh, conditions, as far as like uh, good amounts of food, you might have four eggs on rare occasions. They're about the size of a tennis ball, all right? So it would have to be an oblong tennis ball. Um, but if you wanted the, the size of, uh, you know, bald eagle, uh, chicks, that would be it. So uh, the uh, the adults will, uh, uh, the female lays the eggs, and then uh, they take turns brooding over the eggs. So in some birds, like ducks, males typically leave and have no uh, role in caring for the, uh, the young. Um, but here, one of the two parents is incubating the eggs almost all of uh, the time, giving the other parent time to go look uh, for uh, for food for themselves and later for the uh, for the young, the incubating parent will occasionally stand and rotate the eggs, maybe fluff up the nest uh, uh, material, and this is important because not only does this warm the eggs, but it prevents the uh, embryo's membranes from sticking to um, uh, from sticking to the uh, the shells. So um, right now. Uh, the bald eagles in our area are most likely uh, incubating uh, the nests, uh, and they will hatch soon. Not all of the eggs uh, hatch, all right? And uh, human disturbance may cause uh, the adults to stay away a little longer um, 
uh, which may uh, cause them a uh, freezing. I remember a couple of years ago, there was a nest that failed uh, and there had been a really cold snap. And it was wondered whether that really uh, cold snap, uh, you know, uh, had a role in uh, the, the eggs not being able to hatch. Now, uh, the young are kind of a very light uh, grayish brown uh, when they first hatch, but then they become uh, dark. And the adults are really important in warming them because they can't regulate their uh, temperature yet. Uh, the adults will put food into their mouths. Uh, they don't regurgitate their food the way that uh, many uh, birds uh, do, all right, and are usually bringing food to the nest often. Now, Adults apparently are so interested in being good parents uh, that they bring so much fish to the nest when the uh, young are early, uh, are when the uh, chicks are young uh, that the leftover fish, which is uneaten, may actually outweigh the chicks for a while. Uh, later, uh, there is no you know waste fish uh, in general because the uh, the young have such a voracious appetite. Um, but early on, uh, the adults tend to bring more food than is needed. Uh, in a nest, the oldest chicks get fed first. So there is a problem with having siblings. Usually, if there are two eaglets, both of them will survive. If there are three eaglets, it's common that the youngest one will not. All right. And so in the nest, there's kind of a, a competition uh, where everyone wants to get the food. If two eaglets are close in size, they'll fight a little bit more. But often what happens is just, you know, because one was laid first, females are a little bit bigger than males. Very often it sorts out where um, one of them just becomes more dominant and the other ones are submissive. The submissive ones will actually just kind of sit with their head bowed while the other ones feed and not begin to feed until the other ones have had uh, enough. And you can imagine that under certain circumstances, this may mean that uh, the younger uh, chicks uh, do not uh, survive. Uh, that may depend on the availability of, uh, of food. And a lot of birds do that, where they lay more eggs than will probably survive with the idea that, you know, perhaps if you know, something happens, like a cold snap, and maybe the first egg that was laid or the first young dies, you know, then here's a, you know, a, um, a additional a young which would make it. Now, notice how dark they are. This is as dark as bald eagles will get. All right. So as they're developing, you're just dark brown uh, feathers. Uh, their bills, which will later be bright yellow, um, uh, are also more of a, a dark uh, color. Uh, so um, uh, here they are. Uh, by uh, the time that they are two weeks old, they're a pound or two. And then they start gaining about six ounces per day. This is the fastest growth rate known in birds. Once again, time is short. All right. You know, they, they want to be able to fly these, you know, seven foot wingspans before it gets too cold. And so, you know, they don't have an unlimited amount of time in which to uh, develop. The adults are not only feeding them, but also protecting them from predators, all right, because there are gulls and crows and hawks and other eagles, Go, you know, other eagles could be golden eagles, but also other bald eagles, which could prey on the young. Uh, raccoons, bobcat, black bears who can climb trees. Uh, so all of these are potential uh, predators. And so um, the adults are helping to uh, defend um uh, uh, the young uh, during uh, that uh, that time. As they start getting older, the young the adults spend a little less time near the uh, nest. Uh, they still do a number of roles. Now it's getting warm, and so these eagles may actually uh, benefit from the shade of the parent. So the parent might actually stand over them and give them a little bit of uh, shade. When full grown eagles can eat two pounds of food at a time, a lot of it can be stored in the stomach as they slowly digest it, but they also have a crop in their throat, which uh, can hold some food while they're digesting it. Um, by eight weeks, uh, by eight weeks, the eaglets are standing and walking around the nest and then beginning to uh, flap uh, their uh, wings a little uh, bit later. Uh, so it's going to, I mean, it's has to be terrifying if you're a big bird to try to fly for the very first time. And so for weeks prior to that, they've been practicing uh, their muscle uh, movements um, 
uh, as they uh, uh, you know are, are preparing uh, for this. As I had pointed out, uh, the father is smaller than uh, the mother, and at some point is smaller than uh, at least some of the chicks as well. And so uh, it may uh, uh, kind of be intimidated as it leaves, so that the female may start um, uh, taking uh, the male's food uh, away uh, or harassing it uh, vocally. And once again, she's you know, considerably bigger than her, uh, bigger than him, uh, so that uh, many males uh, may perch near the nest, but not really spend much time on the nest after, uh, you know, a certain, uh, a certain point uh, here. Right. So here you see these uh, eaglets are now uh, much, much uh, bigger. Notice them flapping uh, their wings like their flight feathers are not ready for flight yet. Um, but certainly, uh, you know, uh, this is becoming uh, more and more uh, imminent. And so uh, they can only get this big, obviously, because both parents are still uh, are, are both still uh, feeding. them. OK. So this is obviously an eagle. You, you were to see this, everyone says, oh, look at that, oh, look at the white head, look at the white tail, that is a bald eagle, I can tell. But if you were to see this, a lot of people would probably not know that that was also then a bald eagle. Uh, the reason is the bright white head and tail don't come in until like four and a half to five years of age. So it's easy to mistake immature eagles. Probably more people see eagles than uh, they know, but many of the eagles are just immature and aren't as noteworthy. So uh, these wings are huge. Look at that wing. That is a huge, huge wing. So just like the size of the wings alone, you know, you have to think uh, it's most likely an eagle. But notice uh, the white. So even though it doesn't have a white head and tail, there is white on the bird. Um, uh, even though it's a little more splotchy, that's kind of a giveaway that it's a, a bald eagle. Now, I, obviously, the white tail, the, the white feathers are a key, but just a couple other things. Cool. See how bright yellow the bill is and the iris. So those are also adult features. The immatures will have more of a brown iris and also a, um, a, darker, uh, a darker bill. So notice a yellow iris and a yellow here. So they start off uh, in their... Uh, uh, their first half year uh, after they leave the nest as being very dark brown. The, the bills are dark. The, um, the, uh, 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 the iris is uh, as dark. Now, they're big when they leave the nest. Not only are they bigger than the male adult, uh, but actually they're a little bit bigger than adults. Their skeletons weigh the same but their um, wings and the feathers are just a little bit longer. So if you were to stretch out their wings, uh, the immature uh, wings are just a little bit longer than the adults and the tail is a little bit longer than the adults, meaning also they fly a little different uh, where they can uh, rise a little more easily on the thermals. You get to the next year, uh, they're going to uh, change their feathers every summer. Look at the head, see how it's becoming more of a beige? So you would say, aha, this isn't your first year. This is your second year. You're probably like a year and a half old by this point because I can see, you know, your feathers uh, on your head are, you know, are not uh, dark uh, brown, uh, more of a beige color. Notice the bill is not a bright yellow yet. Notice the eyes are not a bright yellow yet. That will happen later. All right. You get to the next year. Now we're looking at two and a half year old birds. Um, look at all the white. So once again, you wouldn't think that's a bald eagle. You're thinking bald, you know, white head and white tail. What's all this white? Lots of people were confused. John Audubon was confused. John Audubon did not apparently care for bald eagles all that much. But then when he went to Washington State, he saw an eagle there, which he named the Washington Eagle. And he was just so impressed by it. And he just said so many nice things. He was probably looking at an immature bald. Uh, and so uh, it's easy to mistake these. Lots of people uh, have. Lewis and Clark did. John Audubon did. Lots of people did. So uh, this is what uh, they will uh, look like, you know, say at about two and a half years of age. Notice that brown stripe near the eye. All right. There was an adult that flew away. Uh, that brown stripe near the eye. So you could easily confuse it for an osprey, once again, that have a brown stripe near the eye. So here was one on the Delaware last summer. All right, notice all the white here. Notice there's brown and white on uh, the tail. 
So once again, now, now that you know this, you might say, oh, I'm seeing more eagles than I used to because now I know what, an, you know, that's a bald eagle. I, I didn't, you know, I might not have picked that out earlier. This eagle, you know, looks, uh, looks a little dirty, all right, when you see it uh, closer up. Um, but it's not, here's just, it's a little bit older. All right, so now uh, we're getting uh, to uh, three and a half years. It's getting, uh, a, you know, a whiter head. Uh, but notice there's still plenty of brown. All right, and it's not like a bright white uh, yet here. All right, so, you know, here we are slowly maturing. And then even this bird, all right, I'd like, I don't think I'm imagining this. Um, but look here, can you see a little bit of brown? So, I, you know, if I had to, you know, say I might think this was, you know, like maybe four and a half years as opposed to like, you know, six. All right. Because once again, you know, the, the, the and if you'll notice here on the neck, can you see a little bit of brown in there and a little bit of brown in there? All right. So it takes about five years uh, to get um, uh, the white ahead. Now, um, I, I, I was thinking of, of wrapping up in about uh at, at 10 minutes and asking if you have any questions. Um, but then also I, uh, I'm really excited about helping out the Bashakil uh, this summer uh, with their Eagle, um, uh, uh, the, the Eagle Watch and, and part of the Nature Watch program. Uh, and uh, I'm making a series of videos and I must admit, I, I have a bunch which are kind of in the works on the chemical aspect, which I'll mention at the end. So uh, this says part one and it's, uh, so there's going to be more that I add to my playlist. And so if you found this interesting, if you wanted to go to my YouTube channel at Dr. Jan 41, um, in the upcoming weeks, there'll be a few more videos here. So, just on talking about threats to bald eagles, um, you'd think that once this happened, that once the bald eagle became the seal, and, and they were really, they really wanted to get it right. So notice there's no feathers on uh, the legs here, that that was sometimes uh, a, a concern that someone had sculpted or given the Im image of an eagle, but that maybe they had used the wrong eagle here. So clearly this is a bald eagle. So once it was part of the, the Great Seal, obviously our country loved it. Look, we see it on our coins. We see it, you know, obviously in flags. We'll see it, you know, in uh, sports teams, um, uh, et cetera. Um, but for all that love that we patriots have for our bald eagle, um, certainly they weren't treated very well because um, they feed on uh, ducks. All right. And then certainly, you know, ducks were uh, were killed and to be honest, what I'm about to say, I'm just telling historical truths. People used to do a whole lot more shooting than they do now. All right. So now you can't just shoot any bird at any time. Um, but for most of this country's history, you could. All right. If you had a gun, you just shoot what you want when you want. In fact, there were what were called side hunts that would typically occur in winter. You would just have contests with your friends who could just shoot the most stuff. It didn't matter if you were going to like eat it or not. And just, you know, having a, a competition there. So bald eagles were shot a lot. And sometimes it was because there were misconceptions. Now, bald eagles are predators. And can they eat, you know, uh, uh, animals uh, that, you know, a, a farmer might have. Uh, sure, they might. However, that possibility was um, uh, was overblown, where it just they had a, a reputation for some people. While some people were saying, oh, look how noble, they're a symbol of our country. Other people were saying, oh, this is a cowardly bird that eats pigs and, and takes food away from everybody else. Uh, and so there were uh, bounties paid for eagles. So not only were people shooting eagles, they were paid by the government to do that. All right. And so this one source I read, if you looked at newspaper articles and searched for the word bald eagle shot, you know, just, you know, over 180,000 examples of that. And that started to take its toll where as we get into the 1800s, people are noticing eagles are getting more and more rare. All right, they used to be everywhere, and now we just don't see as many of them. And so much so that the Bald Eagle Act uh, was enacted in 1940 to help protect them from being shot. Now, even when this uh, happened, this did not apply to Alaska. So even if there was a Bald Eagle Act to protect eagles, you could still shoot eagles uh, in Alaska. In fact, you would be paid by the government to do that. There was a... Um, 
bounty because it was thought that eagles would compete with humans for salmon. And so by the 1950s, uh, 128,000 eagles had been turned in to collect a bounty. And just because they were protected by law didn't mean that people stopped shooting them. So in the West, ranchers between the 1940s and 1960s killed an estimated 20,000 bald eagles. This is after they had legal um, uh, uh, protection. I'd like to say that that ended, all right, but it didn't. All right, now there's some good news. There was in 1952, eagles were protected in Alaska. In 1966, the uh, Endangered Species Preservation Act was the precursor to the Endangered Species Act, and the bald eagle was one of the first ones um, protected. But that being said, people still shoot eagles. This is not something from like, you know, the 1780s, for example. And so when eagles are found dead and you ask, what's the reason that they were shot? That is the major reason. There are other possible regions, but that's the major reason. Um, when New York finally lost its last natural breeding male in 1980, this was the DDT that I'll talk about in a few minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought was something... I want to do, forgive me, I'm just going to do a very quick aside. Yeah. I'm sorry, I knew there was one more thing I wanted to do. I hope this is the same page. Let's go to Orange County. Sorry. Oh, okay, we'll go there. I'm sorry, that, that, that thing, I'm sorry, it's terrifying and... and it, it's it's worth seeing. So sorry, I had to take a little aside. Um, uh, but uh, look at this. Between 1980 and 1983, there were a couple hundred eagles not only killed in South Dakota against the law, they were killed at a wildlife refuge. In 2023, two men were killed with uh, were, were charged with killing 3,600 birds, including eagles. A 2023 study found that uh, they were looking at birds dead near power lines, including eagles, to see if they had been electrocuted. And they found that no, the most of them had been shot. All right, and so um, even all of these laws uh, still don't fully protect. Uh, eagles. Uh, plus, there are all of these other threats. I'm just going to rattle through them very uh, quickly. Uh, there are traps which are set out, you know, to to catch, I don't know, like, like a, a coyote or a bobcat or something. Well, sometimes they get eagles. So eagles are trapped accidentally. Some uh, ranchers try to poison predators uh, by putting poison in carrion and forgetting that eagles also eat carrion and then poison bald eagles. When we deforest an area, that's less habitat and fewer nest trees. And then unfortunately, then comes the chemical part. Now, once again, I, this is something I'm going to uh, do a little bit later. But if you go right now to the New York State EPA uh, fish advisories, and it says, all right, so everybody, you're the general population, unless, unless you're you know, uh, a child, unless you're a pregnant woman, a breastfeeding uh, woman, uh, or are sensitive for whatever uh, reason, there are in all of these um, uh, uh, streams, and we can go to Orange County, um, limits to what you should eat. You're told eat a meal a month of fish, but no more. Or like white catfish, don't eat them at all, no matter who you are. Or don't eat them if you're pregnant. If you're not pregnant, you can eat one small mouth bass. Um, but if you're uh, pregnant, you can't eat any. So this is New York State. Now, if these um, uh, eagles don't obviously read the reports, and plus they're eating mostly uh, fish. Um, so here, there are fish advisories for Orange County. All right, there are fish that you should not eat. All right, um, no matter who you are, and then some uh, uh, fish that you shouldn't eat if you're in a um, uh, uh, a, a more at risk uh, uh, population. So this is now after we've done so much to protect eagles. Unfortunately, there was a, a pesticide used called DDT, which killed lots of mosquitoes. And you know, I, I don't like DDT. I'm not promoting DDT. But uh, mosquitoes carry malaria, which kills an awful lot of people, and typhus, et cetera. So DDT actually did have very benefit 
strong health benefits for a while and is still okay to use. It's still permitted uh, in certain parts of the world where malaria is a great risk. But it was soon realized that um, these pesticides were having lasting impacts in uh, wildlife, um, especially the ones at the tops of food chains. All right, so uh, because uh, you know, if you put pesticide in the water, the water bugs get a little, the baby fish get a little more, the big fish get a little more. And then, then who's ever at the top of the food chain, uh, like uh, the bald eagles, uh, they have very high concentrations in their bodies. So for a while, there were zero nesting bald eagles in New York State or most of the East Coast for that reason. I just, you know, I, I don't know how old all of you are. Uh, when I was a kid, I really wanted to see a bald eagle. There were no bald eagles anywhere near me. All right, there were some in the Chesapeake, there were some in Florida, but most of the bald eagles were dead. Um, uh, the, uh, their eggs had failed, their young didn't thrive, and they no longer nested over much of their, uh, their habitat until pesticides were banned. But they still, there is still DDT in their systems. You can still find DDT. Uh, that's, it just takes you know decades before it leaves the environment. But the Hudson River was plagued by the uh, pollution by PCBs. Um, mercury is a big problem for uh, bald eagles. Lead uh, from shot. So you know if uh, duck hunters are shooting with lead shot um, and a bald eagle eats a, a wounded duck, it now gets lead. And if you if a, you're a bald eagle and you eat uh, lead uh, that's the size of a grain of rice, that's enough to be lethal to you. Uh, we use uh, lead fishing weights, which then contaminate the water. So there are plenty of chemicals uh, still available. And then the last one before I, I wrap up, uh, I was out kayaking. Uh, I was stupid, so it was my bad. Uh, but this was one of those days uh, with the wildfires from Canada. So look at the sky. Like, obviously, that, that sky shouldn't look like uh, that. Um, uh, but uh, uh, that's a bald eagle flying. So I went home, you know, and I actually, um, I developed asthma for the first time uh, in uh, my uh, 57 years last summer. And so breathing all of this stuff probably wasn't helpful, but it's probably not helpful for that bald eagle either. All right. And so we continue to have, uh, you know, uh, human uh, impacts on uh, bald eagles. So just, you know, a, a synopsis is we love this bird. It's been our national uh, symbol uh, uh, on our seal forever. But that being said, we almost killed it twice. All right. We almost got rid of it by indiscriminate and unregulated hunting. And then we almost got rid of it by our chemical pollution of the world. So that should give us pause, not just for eagles, but for all wildlife that, you know, we humans were powerful. We, we can wipe, you know, species, take species to extinction and wipe them off the face of the earth. But also we're equally powerful to change. So the bald eagle has been taken off the endangered species list because what a good job we've done in correcting our errors and preserving uh, this, uh, this bird. So, you know, two very different, you know, lessons to take away from that. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give an overview to this magnificent bird. Just, you know, this is meaningful to me in that, once again, when I was a kid, this was impossible. All right. There are a bunch of bald eagles nests within a half an hour of where I am now, whereas there was just nowhere I could go when I was a kid to see bald eagles. And once again, if you were to go to the Bashak Hill this summer, um, just stop by on a weekend and there'll be, you know, a volunteer helping you to see a, a bald eagle through a, a, a scope. That was just simply not possible Um uh, uh, just a few decades ago. So, you know, it is a wonderful privilege to get to see this bird, the second largest in North America, um, and, you know, a symbol of our country. So I wanted to wrap up there. Uh, thank you all for uh, coming. I'm going to stick around. If anyone has any questions, feel free to shout out. If you have anything that you'd like to add, by all means. Otherwise, uh, we at uh, the Audubon Society and at the Bashakil frequently give uh, talks and walks, et cetera. If you wanted to you know, connect to these organizations, check them out online, join these organizations, uh, we'd love to have you on some of our events.